Let's pray. Our loving Father in heaven, you who was, is, and forever shall be, you who created families, O Lord. In the lesson this quarter, we've learned so many analogies concerning family. We are aware that indeed you care about our families. We want to thank you for this evening. Dr. Chidi has talked about cancer in the body. We know very well, Lord, that our families also, some are even toxic. That's why we come to you this evening, knowing that you are the one who started the institution of marriage and only you can heal us. We want to thank you for being with us for the eight days that have passed and making it possible for us to come to this ninth day. As your servant comes to speak, we pray that you're going to use him. Not like you've used him before, because this is a new day. We don't know, Lord, what you want to tell us. Speak to everyone, those present, and even those following from far. We have so many needs, O oh Lord, and thank you because you know them. We pray that you may forgive us, O oh Lord, where we've done contrary to your will. Just like the physical cancer, some things in our family, Lord, require a miracle, and we trust you to do that. But there are some other things, Lord, that we need to do ourselves. The possible things, like even what we had yesterday, Lord, that we should not uh, be angry, O oh Lord. We pray that you are going to help us, even as we listen today, to know what it is that we need to do as individuals and even as families, even as we prepare for your soon return. We have so much to ask. We don't know even how to pray, O oh Lord. Grant us this and many other things. For you are our Father, you know what's best for us, and more so because we ask all this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for His grace and mercy to be with us again. We really appreciate that God is taking care of us. You have to know everything we see is by grace and grace alone. Before we begin the program, I would like to mention some few prayer requests. And then I will call Pastor Christian to pray for these prayer requests. I will just mention a few of them. When you read these prayer requests, you will know how our friends relatives need the Holy Spirit to move on one of them says I want prayer for my sister who wedded two years ago and the husband has now filed for divorce and has chased her away with her two-year-old praying for the son who lives in Nairobi and doesn't go home even call praying for the husband who does not go to church and is also cheating on her in court praying for peace in the family praying that their family may have harmony and peace and other prayer requests may we stand for just one minute and have a silence prayer and after that, Pastor Christian will pray for this prayer request and others according to the Holy Spirit who will lead you. Let us take one moment of silence to open your hearts to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, how good it is to call you our Father. We are your children, and you invite us to come into your throne room of grace in time of need. 
And this evening, Lord, we come to you because our hearts need you. We want to pray in a very special way for the prayer requests that have been given to us. We want to intercede. We want to lift up our sister, Lord, who is going through the pain of divorce. You know how sin has damaged our world. And divorce is very painful. And we pray, Lord, that you would comfort our sister. Put your arms around her and speak peace to her. Heal her heart. We pray, Lord, that you would be with the son who has distanced himself, Lord. And we pray that at this very moment, your Holy Spirit would impress his heart to return and to reach out and make contact with his family again. Father in heaven, you are the God who is able to perform miracles. And for those who have prayed tonight, Lord, you know their greatest need. Many of them need a miracle. And we pray that you would just speak a word, touch their hearts with your healing hands, and a miracle can happen. Increase our faith. We put our trust in you. Thank you, God, that you are a healing God. We trust you with all our hearts. Speak to us now as we continue this journey of discovering principles that can change our life, our homes, and our marriage. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Master. Um, this evening we're going to look again why some couples succeed and others fail, part three. This is a deep topic. I'm just trying my level best to condense it so that we can catch it within these two weeks. But after here, you have to go and search for yourself. You can start a lot of researchers out there. People have been doing research on this. And one of the people I do recommend is Dr. Gottman and Dr. Johnny Gray. I really appreciate their work because they have spent a lot of time and a lot of money to to do research on couple and it's not only a research whereby people are just jumping to a conclusion but some of them you may find them they have been following some couple for about 50 years so it's, it's not an easy job so when you read the research you will discover that most of the things which have been happening among us and problems are the things which we can solve if we could only know the methods. Um, one of the things which we mentioned, I said lack of knowledge on how to solve marital conflicts. This is one of the reasons why we experience a lot of a breakout of marriages nowadays because people don't have enough knowledge on how to solve marital problems. We are controlled by so-called present society as i said social media and other things are shaping our minds to the extent that instead of looking to the word of god to see how we can solve our problems we look at the way society is guiding us and if you will only look at the society most of people are not controlled by principles but they are controlled by emotions so you have to be very careful when it comes to marital problems solving marriage problems is an art and science combined just look your neighbor and ask him or her are we together When it comes to solve marital problems, put this in mind. You have to combine two things, science and an art, together. An art is the way you fashion something, the way you make something attractive. And science is based on research. 
So if, if you combine these two things, he will produce very good solution. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Just this single statement has a lot in it if you will think in deep. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So sometimes we may think that is the devil attacks us, but it's not the devil. It's lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being a priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. So if, if we know the way we can solve our family problems, the benefit will not only be on us, but also it will be go beyond ourselves. It will touch our children and our children's children. Hallelujah. So you have to find knowledge. Don't spend a day without getting new insight. Hallelujah. Don't spend a day. You finish your night. You just go to sleep. And when, when I ask you, 24 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours, have you got something new in your mind? Our minds cannot be full. Hallelujah. Just put on new, new knowledge every day. Just read, read, read. If you can't read, we have so-called audio books. Listen. When I'm driving about 6 hours or 12 hours, I can drive about even 18 hours. I don't want to spend the, the whole journey without reading something. And because I'm driving, I have audio books. I can download some things, uh, YouTube online, something which will, will profit my brain. If you just sit there without adding anything in your brain, then the brain will shrink. But if you add something, your brain will expand. Hallelujah. Seek knowledge. I'm so sorry if I will offend you on this statement. On Sunday, I'll be going back to Tanzania. So we'll be friends later. Yes. Uh, I think we'll touch this later, but let me tell you this. I don't understand. Spending two hours watching football. I think in, in America you call it soccer. If I'm right, I don't know. I, I don't understand. You, you're spending two hours Watching someone playing football, a man like you, who is going to be paid for that and you get nothing? It's me, not you. I don't understand. Those two hours of watching football, if you can take just one book reading single chapter of it you would have got a lot of materials than shouting go 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 i don't mean that you should take everything i'm saying but just go and assess yourself your brain is one of the most important organ God has given you. Very important. That's why with me when I'm tired, instead of accepting everything you are telling me, I just tell you, I'm tired. I can't listen to anybody. I want to rest because I want a break for my brain. Hallelujah. I don't watch horror movies. You know when you are watching those things, your body, remember I told you, the brain cannot differentiate between reality and imagination. So when you watch, the body responds. 
if you see somebody is falling the brain tells you it's real so the cortisol hormone will be up may the lord help us another problem is gender-based ways of presenting issues if you want to present something to your wife or your husband you have to know the way men and women thinks different one of the most frequent asked questions or complaint from uh, different genders is this the most frequent uh, expressed complaint women have about men is that men don't listen when you're talking to him he's busy and sometimes they they, they may even be the chatting mr so and so i have this and this you just talk talk a lot of things and then at the end the man will respond with just a single statement i got it that is it but if if you know the way these two genders think or perceive things it will help you and then the same men says women want to fix us they correct us i remember one day i was doing this couple counseling and then the man said pastor i love my wife but always she is busy correcting me when i'm doing this and this she will just come and say no that is not right but men listen to this when women or when a woman loves someone she wants to fix him that's how they are i remember for the first time when i was doing these television presentations i was in mwanza and my wife was in the Salaam. and i remember just after presenting i was talking to her over the phone and then she told me that I was watching you presenting the title was perfect presentation was good but i don't support your dress code <laughs> and i told her what's wrong with that said the trouser and the shirt and the tie were not matching so from now onward before you go to the stage make sure that you make a video call <laughs> and then i see the way you are you know as a man you can be offended but that's the sign that that woman loves you you remember i told you that with them they have so-called reflective thoughts so when you are there it's not you but it's her so she will make sure that she's comfortable with you that's how they are but at the same time my sisters listen to me men are created to solve their only problem without any help <laughs> that's how they are so if you want a man to fix a bulb somewhere you get me don't tell him that there is a problem here the bulb is not working go and fix it to a man that is a command and the man will say you cannot control me how can you present this when the man comes just tell him i've been thinking of you I know when you are here everything is okay you see you see they say oh yes <laughs> <laughs> then a man will say I am a lion in this house then tell him you know I've been frustrated because the bulb is not working 
But I knew when you come here, everything will be okay. <laughs> then a man will tell you, let me look at it. <laughs> you see, that's how we are. Don't forget, men speak with logic. So when he says every, anything, you have to know that a man has done enough analysis of the matter. So when he speaks out, he is ready for any question. Women speak with emotions. Me and my, my wife, we have a session. It is our own session. You can take it if you want. We call it Say Anything Session. When that comes, I am not a pastor. Because if she looks at me as a pastor, she will preserve some things. So I do tell her, say anything criticize me I am ready to listen and sometimes when you allow a woman to do that get prepared <laughs> because sometimes she will say I even don't know how to begin <laughs> and they will say speak out Anyway, I would not say anything. Now, because a man is always there to fix problems, then a man will say, I have given you a chance to speak, and you don't speak. Don't say anything. <laughs> no. That's how they are. They speak with emotions. A man should listen like a lady and speak like a man hallelujah a man should listen like a lady but speak like a man but you can say pastor what is that all women knows how to listen all of them because God created them that way so that they can take care of the children. How do they listen? Listening is an art. For example, if a woman speaks, she wants support. Like this. Uh -huh. Is it? That's tough. Why do they do that? Oh, what is that? They need support. But men, you just go and, and see the way men speak. When men speak, they're in men talk. When one man speak, others are listening. Just go and, and, and see them. When they're speaking, when one man speaks, other men are just listening. That's how they are. But when women speak, everyone is speaking. A lady should listen like a man and speak like a lady. Pastor, what is this? When a man speaks, when your husband speaks, don't talk. Listen. And show that you are listening. But if he talks and you talk, you know what next? But if you don't want a fruit, uproot the tree. What does it mean? Most of, of many marriages, they are dealing with the results. They are dealing with the fruit. But if you will go deep and see the root cause of the problems, you have to uproot 
the roots and then you will completely finish the problem in your family men today are confused about what their roles are and how best to live their lives we get mixed messages from media the educational system churches and even the government yes so you'll find that men are confused even young boys don't know what they will do next because they look at their fathers the way they are and they copy them. Men are confused. But when you read the Bible, you will understand that God has given us roles. Every gender has their own roles. Hallelujah. A man's role used to be pretty clear, defined as a provider and protector of his family. By the way, the word father, the name father, it means provider. Hallelujah. That's our role. We are created that way. We have to provide. And when we fail to provide, we die early. While these roles are still fundamental things, have gotten much more complicated regarding relationships. Most women do not leave their husband because he is a poor provider. They leave because he does not fulfill her emotional needs. That's a challenge we have. Let's keep on listening. Women talk when they feel talking. Yes. You say, but pastor, what about men? Men talks when they have something to say. If they don't have anything to say, men will never talk. So we'll just find him sitting there, watching television, reading magazine, or reading a book. Nothing. He doesn't talk anything. But let me say, but he's so quiet. That's how he is. By the way, if you will not allow him to get this quiet time, a man will not be strong anymore. So he needs this time to be alone. But at the same time, if you will not allow your wife to speak, even if it's nonsense according to you, let her speak. Let her offload. Hallelujah. That's not the way, that's not complaining. She's not complaining, but she's offloading. When she feels to talk, she will talk. Women can talk when they feel talking, even though they don't have something to talk about. But men will talk only when they have something to talk about. So sometimes you are, your, your, your wife may just provoke you. I call it provoking, but it's not provoking, by the way. But she may tell you, can we talk? Then you say, about I said, anything. Let's talk. You can keep talking. Don't wait until there is a problem. Every good husband wants to satisfy his wife in almost every area, but he doesn't know how. One of the great philosophers and psychology uh, said, I've been doing a lot of research in my life and I've got a lot of answers, but only one question, I've never got an answer, and that is, what does real woman want? I don't know. From tomorrow, we'll go deep. Let's stand for the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wisdom from above. We have to admit that all these good things are from you. If you let any researcher to do this research, it's because you love humanity. And you want us to live in a good way. Father, help us to understand these things, not only to listen, but to put them in action. 
so that at the end your name will be glorified thank you father because you love us and you are going to heal everyone who is going through any pain because of marital problems father we are praying for the children who are suffering from family conflicts may you heal them may you help them because you know how to advise and counsel them more than any human being we commit all them on our hand in jesus name we pray amen